just a reminder before we get started. If you like the content you see here and you want to see the entire mini course, you can gain access to this for free over on Skillshare by using the link in the description down below. That will give you a one month free trial of the premium membership and gain you immediate access to the full third person platformer controller mini course topic over on Skillshare. Otherwise, the content will continue to upload weekly here in attempts to please the YouTube algorithm and keep the content flowing. To get started, all that we're going to need is an empty project, preferably with no template and no starter content. As an example, what I have here is a brand new Unreal Engine 5 project. You can see there's nothing in here. Just to mention that everything I cover here will work in Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5. To use the assets that I'll be sharing with you, you will need at least Unreal 4.26, but any version above that will work perfectly fine. To access the assets that I'll be using for all of the content in these videos, you can get that from the link in the description down below to the Devi assets on itch.io. There will be two options in there. One is a fully working project with some basic blueprint setups. I would recommend leaving that one for now. Uh, that one's just a very basic introduction to the Devi mascot. It won't have the kind of full featured character controller that we'll be creating here. It's just a very basic example. The one that you want to download is the Devi assets only. That's going to provide a very basic template level, the animations, the mesh, and the very minimum requirements that we'll need to get this project going. So I'd recommend downloading that one. That will give you a project in 4.26, which is why, as I've mentioned, you need that version to be installed. But when you have that downloaded and opened, we are ready for the next step. The project you've just opened should look something like this. As I've mentioned, we have just a very, very basic level. This will be enough for us to test all of the movements, though, a couple of walls to test our wall jumping, wall sliding, double jumping, and a floor to run around on. What we want to do is we're going to take all of the assets from this project. So that's going to be everything, including the animations, the materials, meshes, and the map itself. Now, if you wanted, you can come in and just take individual assets from the project. So you can migrate just the static meshes or the skeletal meshes or just the animations. What I'd recommend is taking the entire bulk of this. So what we'll do is with both of the folders collapsed, I'm going to shift select the assets and the maps folder. With those selected, we can right click and we want to find the migrate option. And with Migrate selected, this will just tell us a list of the things which are going to be exported to our other project. So that is all of the animations. This is really handy because this will keep a link to our skeletal meshes. We probably don't need the mask. So I'm just going to untick the mask and it will bring everything, including the maps as well. And if we scroll down, we can see that's taking the, the main map and the light build data and everything that I have here. So that all looks fine. We want to press OK. Then this next step is really important. You want to navigate to where you've stored your main project. So that new empty project. Mine is called third person in my Unreal Engine 4 projects folder. And then when we're inside of this, we want to go to our content folder specifically and double click into content. Now, when you're migrating anything inside of Unreal, it's really important that you choose the correct folder. If you put this anywhere else, you will be given a warning saying that some things may not come across correctly, uh, or you may have some bad assets being exported. So make sure that you put this in the content folder. It's exactly where the migrate process is expecting to be directed. If you select that, what you should see is the content migration has completed successfully with no warning errors. Now, this will only work if you're exporting from a version lower or the same as the version you're working in. So this is a 4.26 project exporting assets to a Unreal Engine 5 project. What wouldn't work, you're more likely to come up against errors if you're exporting from a 4.26 project down to a 4.25 project. So just make sure that you have the right engine version installed, at least 4.26 or above. With that done, we're done with this temporary project, so we can now close this one down. And what we want to do is just double check that everything has come across to the new project correctly. So we have all of the animations. We can just open one of these and we'll see that we have the running animation set up as we want, all linked to the correct mesh. The material is already applied, so this is looking good. Now we can also go into our meshes folder just to check that we have everything here. So we have both versions, both of their physics assets and the skeleton, and then the map just to double check that we have all of the map set up as we want. Okay, so that is all looking pretty good. Now, a few things stick out here. There are just a few kind of general house tidy or standard project setup steps that I take in any new project. The first thing is whenever I open a new window, I want it to be docked here. I'm just going to go to edit 
editor preferences and then just drop down the asset editor open location and change this from default to main. So default is this floating window, which we don't really want. And main now means that whenever we open something, whether that's a blueprint, another a window from up here or an asset, it's always going to dock it along this top window. So if we just check another mesh, that will now always open up here. The other thing is we don't want the auto exposure, which is going to be trying to correct the light balance when we're in the editor. I'm going to go to the project settings. I'm going to look for auto exposure. And we just want to untick the auto exposure. And I think even if we untick this in an Unreal Engine 5, we also need to set this to manual. Otherwise, it's going to still try and process some form of auto exposure in the background. That just means now that whatever we see here will be exactly the same as what we see when we press play. Now, the next thing that kind of highlights that we're possessing a default pawn in here because we haven't set any of the project defaults. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now as well. So we have basically all of the groundwork done by the end of this video. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to come into the content folder. We'll create a new folder here. So Control Shift and N is a shortcut to create a new folder. And we'll call this one Blueprints. Inside of the Blueprints folder, I'm just going to right click and create our first Blueprint class. The first one we need is of type Game Mode. And I'll call this one BP underscore Game Mode B. Now that we have the default game mode ready for the project, we also want our default character. So we're going to right click, go to blueprint class, create a new character class and call this one BP underscore player base. Then I can hear my fans ticking away quite heavily in the background. So in Unreal 5, what you might want to do outside of play is we can drop down this and this will work in Unreal 4 as well. Untick real time. And this just means that nothing will be processing when we're not in play mode. And it just goes a little bit easier on the GPU and the processors. And now, even though I'm using Unreal 5 to try and keep this as relevant for as long as possible, my system does struggle a little bit with this. So I will be taking some uh, useful steps to try and get uh, the, the project working on lower spec systems as well, like my own. So what we're going to do next is now that we have our blueprint classes ready, we're going to go into the project settings. We'll navigate to maps and modes. Deselect the auto exposure if you still have that. I'm going to set the default game mode to the one that we've just created. And the default class, we want the default pawn to be replaced with BP underscore player base. That will also update this in the game mode if you haven't done that before. So we can check that in a second. And whilst we're here, we can change the editor startup map to our main one that we've imported. And if we wanted to ever build this, we'll play this in our main map as well. So that now means that whenever we come back into the editor, or if we give this to somebody else to play, we'll automatically be loaded into this test map that we have just here. If we were to press play now as well, we can see that the default game mode is our custom one, and the default player is also our custom character. Now, they won't do anything at the moment. We haven't set up any inputs or anything. But also just to confirm, if we go into the BP underscore game mode base, then what we can see is the default player class has been set to player base. So anything that you change here will be automatically synced with the game mode that you've selected here. Vice versa, if we were to change something here to just the default character and we compile this, go back to the project settings, we can see that we get the character as the default player. So just keep that in mind and make sure that you have the correct player class selected. Obviously, we're going to be building all of our logic into the BP underscore player base. So we'll keep that as the default, compile that, save those, and we now have the project set up and ready to go. So this is going to be the basic layout for our kind of game as we go through and prowl things. And this just means that now, as soon as we start adding our features and updates to all of our classes, uh, we know that we're ready to just press play and test out our new features. Hopefully you've enjoyed that content. And just a reminder, if you wanted to get access to the full topics in this mini course, it's already fully available and uploaded over on Skillshare. I'm providing links in the description down below, which will allow you to sign up with a free premium trial. You'll gain full access to all of the courses over on Skillshare, including this 3D platformer focused controller topic. So be sure to check that out if you wanted to take advantage of the offer whilst it lasts. And as always, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of the people supporting all of the work that I do here on YouTube, allowing me to keep making this weekly content. So a big thank you to all of the names scrolling down the screen.